Have you ever heard that nature, nurture and water go hand in hand? Isn't it very true? Without water, we cannot imagine life on the earth. We use huge amounts of water not only for drinking and washing purposes but also in the process of production. Water is also needed in agriculture, industries and for generating electricity through reservoirs of dams. Do you know our earth is called the water planet? Because three-fourths of the earth's surface is covered with water. It is therefore appropriately called the water planet. There is a question popping in my head. We all know that three-fourths of the earth's surface is covered with water. If there is more water than land on this earth, why do so many countries face water scarcity? There are many reasons. 97.3% of the water on the earth is salt water, which are found in ocean bodies and the seas. It is not fit for human consumption. Fresh water accounts for only about 2.7% of the water. Nearly 70% of this occurs as ice sheets and glaciers in Antarctica, Greenland and mountain regions. Due to their location, they are inaccessible. Only 1% of fresh water is available and fit for human use. It is found as groundwater, as surface water in rivers, lakes and ponds, and as water vapor in the atmosphere. Another reason is overuse and wastage of water due to increasing population, rising demands for food and cash crops, increasing urbanization and rising standards of living. They are the major factors leading to shortage in the supply of fresh water, either due to drying up of water sources or water pollution. Last but not the least is low rainfall. It is one of the causes of water scarcity. Hope all these points are clear to you. Now I am going to tell you something very interesting about water. Water is a renewable natural resource. It can neither be added nor subtracted from the earth. Its total volume remains constant. Its abundance only seems to vary because it is in constant motion. Cycling through the oceans, the air, the land and back again. Through the processes of evaporation, precipitation and runoff. This is referred to as the water cycle. What is the water cycle? When the sunlight falls on the earth, the water in the pond, river, lakes get heated, becomes water vapor and rises. This process is called evaporation after the evaporated air reaches higher altitudes, it becomes cool and water vapor changes into small drops of water. This process of changing water vapor into water droplets is called condensation. These water droplets together form clouds. When they become too heavy to float in the air, they come down as precipitation. Precipitation that comes down in the earth in liquid form is called rain. So children, let us end today's class here. Hope you found my video interesting. Do like and subscribe to my channel and get notifications about upcoming videos. Thank you everyone. Hello everyone. 
if you have ever been to a beach then i am quite sure that the most stunning sight was of the ocean its beauty is enchanting something that can't be put into words it's thrilling to see it calm one instant and then suddenly waves might come crashing down it is never still unlike ponds and lakes yes children you guessed it right today we are going to study about the movements that occur in oceans they can be broadly categorized as tides waves and currents so which one i should explain first what about waves waves are formed when the wind blows across the ocean surface the stronger the wind blows the bigger the wave becomes in the waves the surface water rises and falls do you know that although waves travel at a great distance the water particles remain at the same place to understand it better let us throw a ball in the water and see what happens isn't it fun to watch here you can see that the ball is moving only up and down as the waves pass but it never moves ahead this means that the actual forward motion of water particles in the wave is limited hope this is clear to you do you know during a storm the winds blowing at a very high speed form huge waves these may cause tremendous destruction you must be wondering what could be the other reasons for the formation of such huge waves they are caused by sudden motion on the ocean floor this sudden motion could be an earthquake a powerful volcanic eruption or an underwater landslide they can shift large amounts of ocean water as a result a huge tidal wave called tsunami that may be as high as 15 meters is formed tsunami is a japanese word that means harbor waves as the harbors get destroyed whenever there is a tsunami the largest tsunami ever measured was 150 meters high these waves travel at a speed of more than 700 kilometers per hour you must have heard about the tsunami of 2004 triggered by an earthquake resulted in widespread damage in the coastal areas of india the large damage caused to life and property was primarily a result of lack of monitoring an availability of early warning systems in the indian ocean and insufficient knowledge among the people living in the coastal areas people didn't know that to escape a tsunami they should go as high and as far as they can ideally to a spot 100 feet above sea level or 2 miles away instead of going to high ground people started assembling at the coast to view the miracle of the rapid withdrawal of water from the coastal region which is the first indication of the tsunami as a consequence there was a large casualty of curious onlookers when the gigantic wave struck the indra point in the andaman and nicobar islands got submerged after that tsunami so you can understand how destructive it was let us end today's class here In the next video we will continue with tides. Do like and subscribe to my channel if you want to watch more such interesting videos. Thanks a ton. Hello everyone. Hello everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Happiness is not a matter of events. It depends upon the tides of the mind. Truly said Waves of thoughts rise in our minds just like waves of water rises and falls when tide comes how natural it seems but behind this many forces act 
What are these forces? When does this occur? Does it affect our lives? If you want to know the answers to all these questions, then you must watch the full video. When tide comes, water level rises. But after a time, it falls back. And this rhythmic rise and fall of ocean water twice in a day is called a tide. It is high tide when water covers much of the shores by rising to its highest level. It is low tide when water falls to its lowest level and recedes from the shores. Any idea what are the causes for the occurrence of tides? Let me tell you, the strong gravitational pull exerted by the sun and the moon on the earth's surface causes the tides. Actually, tides follow the apparent movement of the moon due to its closeness to the earth. Do you know there are two types of tides? High tide and low tide. The rise in water level is called high tide while the fall in water level is called low tide. It should be noted that tides do not rise at the same height every day. But why? Because of the changes in the position of the moon and the sun with respect to the earth, which is responsible for the variation in the height of tides. There are two extreme positions. On full moon and new moon day, the sun, the moon and the earth are almost in a straight line. The sun and the moon exert a combined gravitational pull. Thus, high tides are the highest and low tides are the lowest. This phenomenon is known as spring tide. On half moon day, the sun and the moon make a right angle to the earth. Thus, the gravitational pull of the sun and the moon tends to cancel each other. This results in a very small rise and fall in seawater and is known as neap tide. Hope this is clear to you. Now let us know importance of tides. First, high tides help in navigation. They raise the water level close to the shores. This helps the ship to arrive the harbour more easily. Second, the high tides also help in fishing. Many more fish come closer to the shores during the high tide. This enables fishermen to get a plentiful catch. Third, the rise and fall of water due to tides is being used to generate electricity in some places. Hope you got all the points. So children, let us end today's class here. Do like and subscribe to my channel if you want to watch more interesting videos. Thank you everyone. Look at these streams of water. They are flowing constantly on the ocean surface in definite directions. They are moving from one part of the ocean to another just like rivers in the sea. Yes, you guessed it right. They are ocean currents. Some ocean currents flow at the surface. Others flow deep within the water. Some currents flow for short distances. Others cross entire ocean basins and even circle the globe. But how are these ocean currents formed? There are many reasons, such as variations in temperature of ocean water, variation in the density of ocean water, direction of the prevailing winds, and rotation of the earth. All these are the main causes of the movement of ocean water. On the basis of temperature, ocean currents can be classified into two types warm currents and cold currents. Let us know about these two different types of currents. Generally, the warm ocean currents 
originate near the equator and move towards the poles. For example, Gulf Stream. It is a warm current. Whereas, cold currents originate near polar areas and carry water from polar to tropical regions. For example, Labrador Current. Do you think there is any benefit of the movements of ocean water? Yes, there is. They make balance in the Earth's climate. They influence the temperature conditions of the area. For example, warm currents bring about warm temperature over the land surface. On the other hand, cold currents bring about cold temperature over the land surface. Thus you can say that the ocean currents play an important role in controlling the climate. There is a question popping in my head. What about the places where warm and cold currents meet? Such as seas around Japan and the eastern coast of North America? Let us go and see what happens there. Oh my god, it's foggy. Nothing is clear. Yes, you got it right. The areas where a warm and cold current meet experience foggy weather making it difficult for navigation. But you would be amazed to know that such places provide some of the best fishing grounds in the world. So children, let us end today's class here. Hope you found my video interesting. Do like and subscribe to my channel if you want to watch more interesting videos. Thank you everyone.